So let's jump back to our slides and talk a little bit more about the reading on the GMAT and the question types that we're going to see. So today we're going to work on main idea questions. Uh, later in our other reading comprehension classes we're going to tackle these other question types just to create a little bit of similarity for you the analyze argument logical structure and structure of the passage questions are pretty similar to each other and so are the new situation and application questions so in terms of st general styles these are sort of slightly more detailed uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so big styles around the different question types and a couple of them have some more detailed variations. But today we're going to work on main idea questions. So when we're reading, uh, you'll probably remember me having mentioned some of these points. This is what we're reading for. And the style that we read will help us achieve this. We want to notice the opinions. Remember that we talked about the opinion of the author each time we read those passages and that's what I was looking for. It's like, oh, the author agrees with this, he's into this, she's not into that. So I'm reading for the author's opinion. The reason is there are questions on the GMAT around the way the author thinks, so I care about that. Uh, it's not inherently important or good, it's just the GMAT asks me a lot of questions around that, so I want to read for that. We want to notice extreme language, like however, but, most, always, never. There are often questions that relate to these points because they're information management challenges. The GMAT is testing whether or not we notice that uh, something always happens or sometimes happens or most of the time happens and that we understand that there is a distinction between these three things. Again, we're reading for the author's angle. When we said notice opinions, it's not just the author's opinion that we're noticing. We want to notice the opinions of people that are written about in the passages. But also, in addition to that, we want to understand what is the author's angle. Is the author pro this, con this, or neutral? There will be questions that relate to that, so that's what we're reading for. We want to read for the structure. Remember we were talking about how in the first paragraph they make this point and then in the second paragraph they refute the point and in the third paragraph they make their conclusion. So structure, why are we reading for structure? Because there are questions that relate to that, not because it's inherently important, but because there are GMAT questions that relate to how the passage is put together around the author's angle, around opinions of people in the art passage, whether it's the author or someone else. Um, and then the overall idea of the passage is important because, again, they love the main idea questions and primary purpose questions. So this is what we're reading for when we read the passages uh, because that's what the GMAT is asking us for. They ask us questions relating to these things. So what do we do on reading comprehension questions when they appear on the GMAT? Well, the first thing you want to do is ignore what you know. If you know anything about the subject matter at hand in that passage, it is absolutely important that you totally ignore all of your own knowledge around that. The questions that are asked have to do with information presented in the passage. They are not based on information in reality. They are not based on information from other sources. All of the information and the support for the answers comes from this passage. It is important that you ignore what you know about the subject matter. So the first thing we do is work the passage, and we did that on some of these passages together. Then we want to identify and understand the question. This is kind of interesting. Then we're going to work the passage again. So we work the passage once. We understand the question once. We work the passage a second time. We understand the question a second time. And then we work all three of the answer passage and questions. And the reason I do it this way is because I'm trying to work quickly and effectively and I don't want to misunderstand something. So I work the passage, read the question, go back to the passage to find the answer to the question, go back to the question to make sure that I'm looking for answers to that question and not another question that I'd made up in my head and then I'm working all three to make sure that they consistently work together and that's what we're going to do here as well. So main idea questions. 
how do we identify main idea questions? <clears throat> There's a few types of language that appear on these question types. They often say the passage is primarily concerned with. So we know that because of primarily, we have uh, they're concerned with the main part of the passage. The primary purpose of the passage is the same general language, just reworded. And the main idea, where they just flat out say it, the main idea of the passage is so and so. So that's how we can identify the main idea question types. So when we're working the answers, there will often be answer choices that are accurate in that they represent information that was presented in the passage accurately and they would be great answers to other questions. But main idea questions, the answer to a main idea question cannot just be one specific piece of information given in one part of the passage because that wouldn't be the main idea of the whole passage, that would just be one piece of information. So it's important to keep these in mind because these are the answer choices that will trick you into picking because you'll be like, oh, I remember reading that in the passage, that must be the answer. But it was too specific. So on main idea questions, we can eliminate answer choices that are too specific. And then we want to check with the passage to make sure that, um, uh, or check with our notes of the passage to make sure that we have uh, the main idea down. So we're actually going to, let's see if I get this one right. No, got that one wrong too. So we're going to look at these passages that we just looked at, but we're going to look at the main idea questions for each of them. So the passage is primarily concerned with. So if you remember, we circled public education. And the nice thing about if you do the process that we employed, a lot of times your memory will serve you well because you did a good job of dissecting the language uh, and parsing it down into chunks that you can remember. So we talked a lot about public education. We talked a lot about uh, the class and cultural distinctions, social mobility. We talked about. Um, education and those points. So let's go ahead and see if just based on that information that we pulled out when we were reading it, the first and last sentence of each paragraph, we still haven't even read this whole passage. Let's see if we can pick an answer choice that's, that's correct or at least eliminate some. So the more children are born, the more funds have to be put into public education. I don't remember getting this out of any of the sentences. So I don't see how it could be the main idea of the whole passage when I read a good chunk of the passage and this point was not mentioned once. So I'm pretty sure I can eliminate A. How about B? As long as there is some form of public education, then society will function properly. So I remember them talking about class over and over again and, and, and your social mobility and poor versus rich. So this isn't mentioned anywhere in here, so I don't understand how, that could, if, how this could summarize the main idea of the passage. So lower socioeconomic classes, well, I definitely remember them talking about that, are not afforded the same educational opportunities as members of high socioeconomic classes. So they talked about educational opportunities, they talked about the classes, so I'm going to hold on to C. How about D? Forced busing, I almost said busing, forced Busing allowed students from poor allowed students from poor neighborhoods to go to schools in wealthier neighborhoods. I don't remember reading this happening, and it seems like it might have been a point in there in part of the area that we didn't read. But again, we read enough of the passage and good writing. The beginnings and ends of paragraphs and the beginnings and ends of the passages have the densest, you know, highest level information. I don't remember any of this presented. And E, public education is incredibly important. This is a sort of attractive answer choice because everyone would agree with this, but I don't remember that being uh, as solid as this, where, again, just our reading of the first and last sentence of each paragraph should lead us to this answer choice. And that's important because that means that we could have answered, if this was the first question presented on this passage, we could just read um, it pretty quickly, read a portion of it, and answer the question correctly. And remember, we should just do as much work as we need to to answer the question correctly. So I worked the passage. We worked the passage. We read the answer choice. We went back to the passage to, to, to sort of pull out the pieces that we wanted. Uh, we went back to the answer choice. Uh, sorry, we went back to the question, main idea. We worked the answers, and I can connect 
the answers to the passage with language that they use. So I'm pretty sure C is correct. Let's go ahead and pick that. Nice one. So let's take a look at the second paragraph passage that we read, which was, I think this was the science passage. It's talking about dinosaurs and birds, if I remember correctly. So we pulled out dinosaurs and birds. We talked about how there was some, uh, until the last 20 years, however, there was support for uh, comparing them. And then there's current evidence down here at the bottom. Uh, and so we definitely know that they're talking about birds and, and, and dinosaurs and whether or not they come from each other and their feathers and how they evolve. So let's see if we can answer uh, the questions just from that information. So the author of the passage, remember, so question, passage, question, answer choices. So the author of the passage is primarily concerned with arguing that new evidence discredits previous knowledge about skeletal structures of dinosaurs. He didn't seem to mention that, but I'm going to leave this because it's kind of talking about the right things. Uh, B, explaining. So notice these words that start these answer choices. They're important. What is the author doing? Is he arguing, explaining, offering uh, evidence, uh, explaining, or discussing? So let's see. Explaining how phylogenic bracketing allows scientists to infer unknown traits. So I'm like, phylogenic bracketing, I don't remember reading that in my uh, first and last sentence reading of the passage, but this seems like a word I could search for pretty quickly, and if I look through the passage, I see it here. Phylogenic bracketing allows scientists to make inferences about the likelihood of an unknown trait. So this looks like it's word for word pulled right from the passage, but it's the wrong answer, I'm pretty sure. Why is this the wrong answer? Can anyone tell me in the Facebook embed why this is a trick that's try this answer is trying to attract us, but it's definitely incorrect. Why is this answer probably incorrect? I think it's too specific. I think it's too specific. It's definitely in there, but we're talking about the primary purpose of the passage. So I'm pretty sure we can get rid of B. How about C? Is the author's primary purpose to offer evidence to support the idea that chemical evidence is essential in studying extinct species? I only see uh, the mention of chemical evidence down at the bottom, and essential is a really strong word. I don't think that's supported as the main idea of the passage. Uh, it's a really strong word that I don't think gets supported. How about D? Explaining the significance of feather impressions found in fossils at Lyon. This to me, again, I don't even remember reading it, but if it was in there, it seems too specific. Couldn't be the pat purpose of the whole thing. And how about D, discussing recent evidence supporting the idea that some non-avian dinosaurs had feathers. So everyone go ahead and take a look at A and E and tell me in the Facebook embed which, is you, which one is the answer that you think is correct and why. All right, take a moment to do that. So one thing I'm looking at and picking between A and E are these words, arguing or discussing. Is the author making a specific argument or just discussing some information? I don't think the author has made any conclusions themselves. They're just sort of presenting recent evidence and we see that right here so I can point to this recent evidence or in the last 20 years and this is what he ends up talking about for the rest of the bulk of the passage. So I'm going to go with B. What do you think, Jake? You think we got this one? I think so. Nice. There, go. there we go. And again, you can take a look at the explanation on these as well when you're doing your Grokket homework if you come across this passage.